Hey everyone, what is going on? In this episode, we are looking into arrays part two. I'm going to show you how to use arrays a little more practically in a fun little project. And then in the next episode, when we get into loops, we're going to combine what we learned with arrays when we cover the loops episode. From there, you'll be able to recognize how loops and arrays are used together to build lists. And you'll start to see them in all different applications on your mobile devices, websites, all over. So I think this is really good stuff. So let's get into it. Kick the bumper. I have some pre-prepared items that I'm gonna paste in here just to save time, but I'm not going to, I'm gonna type all the code out that's important to learn. The things I'm gonna copy and paste here are just printing text to the screen, and we all know how to do console.writeline with just text in it. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an array of strings. It will hold eight different strings at the different indexes and I'm going to call the variable favorite movie. So this is going to hold my favorite movie and this part I'm going to paste in so that I don't have to give away the answer to what my favorite movie is. Okay, so here's some garbage looking stuff and you're probably going, whoa, do I have to learn all that? No, you don't have to learn all that. All this is is some ASCII art that I downloaded from the web. We'll see what that is later. It is all jumbled up right now, so it doesn't mean anything. There's no secret code in there. Just ignore it for now. Just know that we're going to uh, we're going to answer some questions and then we will get the answer to what my favorite movie is. All right, so let's put our first question in, which is in that stupid Christmas song, How Many Golden Rings? Let's create a variable called first answer. And we're gonna make that equal to int.parse console.writeline. Sorry. Console.readline. Okay, so what is all this stuff? So just like console.writeline writes to the console output, console.readline reads from the console output. So I'll just put a comment here so I can type some notes so you can follow me here. If console.readline stops and waits for input from the user and the user types in the answer to this question, which is five, if they just hit five and enter, readline is gonna return a string with five in it. If you hover read line here, you can see the very first thing here is the return type, and it's going to give everything back as a string. So even if you just type the number five, it's still going to make it the digit five. So if I say var foo is equal to console read line and I type five at the prompt, foo is going to be equal to the string five. So in order to convert that, there are two ways to convert. There is the convert dot to int 32. And then in there, I can pass the console dot read line or I can also do int dot parse. So we're going to use int dot parse this time just because I want to. No other reason, really. So now what that says is read line will return the five as a string. It'll pass this value to the method parse, which will turn it into a number and store foo as a number. And if we hover var, you can see var is only going to allow in 32s because the result of this whole thing is always going to be an int because of the int dot parse. Don't worry too much about the method side of things here. I just needed to convert that to an int. We're going to go over methods in two more sessions. Just kind of bear with it for now. So that's that's what this line below is doing is it's reading from the input. So if I if I put here console dot right line first answer 
and we run that as a test. You can see in that stupid Christmas song, how many golden rings, I hit five. It will reprint out five after that because of the console right line, okay? So this is how we're gonna capture people's answers. So I'm gonna go and copy and paste the next seven of these. All these are our console.write lines with just text in it. There's no real code magic in any of that. And then I do an int.parse repeatedly, the same exact code over and over and over. And I'm just capturing them in different variables called third answer, fourth answer, fifth answer, sixth answer. The idea being that in the stupid Christmas song, how many golden rings, first answer is gonna hold five. And what we wanna do is we wanna print out of the console the fifth element of this favorite movie array. So in that case, that would be the first line to print. If we print out first answer, it's just gonna be five. I actually wanna print this string out right here for five. So I need to print out the value that's stored in favorite movie of index five. So let's copy that down here. And what I really wanna do is since first answer has five in it, I want favorite movie first answer, and that's what I want to print out. So that's the same as favorite movie five, right? Which is this favorite movie five is equal to this. And environment.newline at the end just makes a, puts a return after the line. Otherwise, the next one could go right after it in the same line. So we've got all of our different lines in our array, and we're choosing one of them at a time which index we want to print in what order. So in this case, I'm saying favorite movie, I want you, I want to print out of that array whatever first answer is, and that is five. So let's duplicate these. So that's line zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, control D if you don't remember that. So there's zero through seven, and I've got first answer, second answer, let's copy third answer, sixth, seventh, eighth. All right. Real quick recap, we collected some numbers in a seemingly random order, but they're actually decrypting the order of my hidden message here. And we're using the number that's stored in these answers to print out the correct index of this array. To descramble this, if it's 5012, we would have to have favorite movie 5, favorite movie 0, favorite movie 1, favorite movie 2. But we're not going to hard code these. We're actually capturing our answers for what the order is in separate variables. For those advanced folks out there, you could have taken these variables and made all of these an array as well and stored the first answer in the zero element of an answer array. If you wanna work on that on your own, I will give you this little cheat start, create an array of answers, and instead of storing the answer in first answer, you will store it in answer zero, and so on, one, two, and down and then you will have to use those at the end in place of first answer, second answer. If you wanna just stick to it simply, just know that this is gonna be five. This, we're gonna answer the question to be three, so second answer would be three. So it's gonna print out console.writeline, favorite movie five, favorite movie three, et cetera. So let's, let's run it and see how it works out. In that stupid Christmas song, How Many Golden Rings? Five, an old movie, The Blank Amigos. That would be the three amigos. How many quarters in a dollar? Four. How many teams in a football game? Two. A clear Pepsi product that ends in up, seven up. Five plus one is six. What number are you if you're first in line? You are number one. And I am a total zero. Hey. At least I didn't say you are. So if we capture those numbers and console.writeline those elements of the array, 
in that order, we get the ASCII art that says The Matrix. So that's that. And that is the lesson on arrays. Leave me some feedback. Let me know if you'd like me to go into that a little deeper or keep it basic and still go over it again. I'd be happy to do that for another episode of the course. In our next lesson, we're gonna go through loops. Then after that, we'll go to namespaces and then methods, and then we can really ramp things up and start putting all those concepts together. And we will learn about classes and how to actually create real programs, real applications that make more sense than some of this fun stuff that we're doing now. I know, don't say it's not fun, you know it is. All right, that's it for this one. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I will try to get to them as quickly as possible. And I'll see you online.